Hi Franco, how are you doing? Hi Kasia, I'm fine. Franco is a technology analyst with uh, ID Tech X, and ID Tech X is a consultancy company that provides business intelligence and business advice on emerging technologies. Uh, Franco has been looking at supercapacitors uh, for some time now. Uh, so Franco, in your view, what performance level and what next steps should uh, supercapacitor companies take uh, for their products to have more success in the car industry? Well, um, that's a very good question, Kasia. As you know, well, the super, um, uh, supercapacitor industry has been working on increasing performance, and uh, nowadays we have devices that can reach uh, 30 to 40 percent of the energy density of a lithium-ion battery, and uh, two to three times higher power density. Mm. And uh, in terms of the automotive industry, you know, it's a very com competitive sector, and. Uh, uh, the technology itself has uh, managed to get into the, uh, uh, the applications that are uh, more uh, readable to uh, automotive uh, industries such as stop-start systems and energy recovery from breaking. I think a good step for um, um, having a broader penetration in, in the sector uh, would be to increase energy density and to uh, reduce uh, the leakage, uh, the self-discharge of the device, and which is something that hybrid capacitors are already doing. Um, um, and uh, finally, to well reduce price because automotive industries, as you know, always are looking for better prices. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, also, Franco, I, I, I've heard that uh, there, there are trends that are changing the uh, electrolyte supercapacitors. Uh, and also there are changes in the way that uh, the electrode is manufactured or perhaps the materials that are used in making the electrode in supercaps. Uh, for example, new materials like carbon nanotubes or graphene have a potential. Uh, what's your view on that? Uh, yeah, that's correct. Uh, well, in supercapacitors, graphene and carbon nanotubes have been uh, thought to work as a porous material in electrodes. Uh, this is because of the high energy, uh, porosity that these materials can contribute to the uh, device and uh, in turn to their energy density because as you know um, porosity is related with the uh, uh, surface area variable in the material and in turn that's related with energy density in the final device yes. and um, as you increase capacitance on the device uh, which is related with the porosity and available area you increase the energy density and if you use new uh, solvents, as you well mentioned, that uh, can increase the operational voltage of the device, such as ionic liquid, which work at um, well, 3 to 6 volts as comparison to current uh, solvents that work to 2.7, uh, you can increase both energy and power uh, to the square for each uh, volt that you increase in the operational voltage of the device. So given these, uh, given these trends, who do you think are going to be the winners? Who are the winners in the market today? And given the changes in the trends, who do you think will win in the next five to 10 years? Well, currently, Maxwell Technologies is a, a market leader in the supercapacitor industry. They have had huge success in China. They've all employed their devices in hybrid buses, uh, wind uh, turbines as well. Uh, they haven't had recent uh, uh, other uh, competition, but there are companies that I think that will uh, play a bigger role in the future. Nippon Kimikon, one of them, uh, ESR Micro, all of them Japanese, with uh, very good performance devices, and I think they will give a, a good fight to Maxwell Technologies. Thank you very much, Franco, and if you would like more information, uh, then uh, please visit our website. Uh, we have a market research report on supercapacitors. And Franco is the lead researcher. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thank Franco. You.